Hello teacher, hello students. Welcome to our today's lesson on energy and minerals. In our previous lesson, we discussed forestry in Ethiopia. Let's summarize our previous lesson briefly. I hope you remember all what we discussed. We learned that Ethiopia's forests cover has decreased drastically over the past years. Some of the reasons for the decrease of forest land include the clearing of land for agricultural purposes, as well as the cutting of trees for firewood and many other purposes. Until recently, the country's forest coverage has remained at 3% of the total area. However, due to forest conservation and recent reforestation efforts, the forest cover is increasing. We also discussed that forests have various economic significance. They are used to produce various medical products, furniture, poles for telephone and telegram, firewood, and so on. In our today's lesson, we will discuss energy and mineral resources of our country. Students, I want you to discuss with the students sitting next to you the major sources of energy in your household or family. I'm sure you have discussed the major sources of energy in your household. Let's discuss this further. The energy that a typical Ethiopian family uses as a source of energy can be classified as 
traditional and modern sources. The traditional sources of energy consist of field wood, animal dung, crop residue, and charcoal. In our country, the majority of the population rely on fuel wood and charcoal to fulfill their energy requirements. Students, let me ask you a question. What is likely to happen if majority of the society become highly dependent on fuel wood and charcoal as sources of energy? Jot down your thoughts. Some of the things that can happen as a result of dependency on fuel wood and charcoal as sources of energy. Did you attempt the question? Very good. Using charcoal and field wood as source of energy has the following disadvantages. Using charcoal and field wood as source of energy result in the deterioration of land covered by forest, air pollution, climate change. Now let's discuss the second classification of source of energy, which is modern source. In our country, hydroelectric power is the major modern source of electric energy. The diesel and geothermal resource are also used to generate electricity. There are a number of hydroelectric power stations in our country. These include Koga, Tanabeles, Takazi, Finja, and Gilgal Gibe 1 and 2. The country is called the Water Tower of Africa. This is because the country has huge surface water resources, as well as favorable ravines and gorges. This creates favorable condition for hydropower. According to the Ethiopian Electric Power Corporation, Ethiopia has a huge potential for hydropower development. The country has a capacity of over 45,000 megawatts for hydropower development. However, so far, the utilization of this potential is limited to 2,000 megawatts, which is less than 4.5% of the potential. Despite the availability of such huge hydroelectric power potential, currently only about 46% of
of the Ethiopian population has access to electricity. I hope you all know that Ethiopia has started constructing the Grand Renaissance Dam. Students, did you know that the Grand Renaissance Dam is the biggest hydroelectric power project in Africa? The project aims at meeting the energy generation target set in the growth and transformation plan of the country. This project will help to fill the gap between domestic demand and supply for electric energy. It also helps to earn foreign currency by exporting energy to neighboring countries. The other great potential modern source of energy for our country are solar energy and wind energy. Ethiopia has great potentials for wind and solar energy. According to the Ethiopian Electric Power Corporation, Ethiopia has a capacity of generating more than 10,000 megawatts from wind and solar energy. However, currently it produces less than 2.5% of the overall potential. Ethiopia is geographically located in tropical area. For this reason, the country is endowed with great potential to generate electric energy using sunlight and wind. Despite the potential, the development of solar and wind energy is low in the country. Students, let's now see another potential for commercial energy resource of the country, that is oil and biogas. The demand for oil has increased over time. The country fulfills all of its oil needs by importing from other oil exporting countries. Ethiopia's import of oil products has increased from 555,000 tons in 1992-93 to 1.1 million tons by the year 2002. As you may already know, importing oil requires huge amount of foreign currency. However, various explorations have shown that the country is believed to be rich in fossil fuel resources. It has been proven that the country has a deposit of 100 billion cubic meter of natural gas and over 200 million tons of coal. However, the development of these energy sectors is low. Students, I hope by now you have learned the various energy resources of our country. Now, let's continue to the second part of our today's lesson, that is, mineral resources of our country. Ethiopia is rich in different types of minerals, including metal and non-metal and industrial and energy minerals. Gold, marble, and limestone are some of the major minerals that are mined in our country. Various explorations have indicated the existence of huge deposits of platinum, tantalite, soda ash, and phosphate rock. The mining sector is one of the underdeveloped sectors in the economy. It contributes to less than 1% to the country's GDP. There are different factors that contribute for the underdevelopment of the sector in our country. Students, I want you to discuss with the students sitting next to you about the factors that contribute for the less development of the mining sector in Ethiopia.
I hope you've discussed the answer. Now, I will mention some of the factors that are the causes for the underdevelopment of the mining sector. Some of the factors that are causes for the underdevelopment of the mining sector are the huge financial requirement for investment due to highly capital intensive nature of the sector, lack of technology to extract the mineral resources. The Ethiopian government is making various efforts to solve these problems and develop the mining sector. Some of these are improving foreign investment policy and providing tax incentives. These measures aim to increase the participation of foreign investors in the sector. Students, in today's lesson, we have discussed our country's resource bases, namely energy and mineral resources. Let me summarize what we have learned so far in this program. We've learned that the energy sources are classified into traditional and modern sources. Ethiopia has huge potential to generate electric power from different sources such as water, solar, and wind. We have also discussed mineral resources. We have seen that there is huge accumulation of mineral resources in the country. We learned that the mining sector is underdeveloped due to capital intensive nature of the sector and technological problems. In our next session, we will discuss the environment. This brings us to the end of today's lesson. See you next time in another program. Until then, it is goodbye from me.